All right, guys, some of y'all uh, have requested this class. We've gone over a little bit um, with the leads over this. So what I'd like for today is my leads don't really give us any input. I want everybody else that is um, messing with load management, or if you got questions about it, feel free to, to speak up. Is there everybody in here? Can we close that door? Um, first off, uh, does everybody know what load management is? All right, you know, let me, let me ask you this. Why do we load manage? Manage the load. Load. Keep the load. So the generator don't get overloaded. Okay, that is one reason to, to do it. And so um, our, the NEC article 72.4 basically says an optional standby source, which is what we're doing. We're not doing, the generators we're installing, they're optional, right? You don't have to have them. They're not legally required. They're not emergency backup systems. A lot of people will buy them because they think, hey, look, I don't want to lose power. Maybe I've got, you know, some medical equipment at my house, or maybe, you know, I don't want to lose my food or whatever, but that's not really a legal emergency system. Um, they are not medical devices. The, the generators we're installing are considered optional standby sources. And so the, the code reads that an optional standby source must have adequate capacity to supply the full load transferred. And so there's two ways to do that. And so you could do that with a little small transfer switch that only has certain breakers that are feeding certain things, or you can use some of the devices that we that you guys are more accustomed to, uh, the, the SMMs or the, the SACs. Now we've moved to the PSP product, uh, the SAC 60, the SAC 60Y, the SAC 24, um, and then the traditional um, it's, it's called a SACO module, we call it an AC module that's found in the transfer switch. And so um, that's one reason. What's the other reason that we load manage? Isn't it huh? A delay? It put a delay on AC? It does put a delay on the AC, right, which, which prevents the load from coming on, you know, you don't want your generator to come on and then everything in the house to come on at one time, you know, so if you've got two ACs and all this other kind of stuff or more and they, and they decide they want to come on at the same time, that's going to put a heavy load on the generator. So the delay function is, is something that we use. But the main reason that we, uh, we do this is you've got this phenomenon that happens when you've got a generator let's let's just say you got your utility and so when electricity is produced it it creates a sine wave and so um that sine wave is coming in everybody knows what a sine wave is right so it kind of looks like that and so um if you were to to measure the sine wave and measure the difference from the top of the wave to the bottom of the wave You'll, you'll, you'll essentially get in, in the systems that we're working with, single phase, um, 12240, you'll get, you'll get 240 volts. And so it, if you measure from the, the neutral point to a wave from here to here, you're gonna get 120 volts. And then if you measure from this point in the wave to the neutral, anybody? 120. That's correct. And so, that's basically what you're measuring when you're when you're when you're um, reading from the grid or from the generator. So what happens is you've got the utility sine wave that's that's putting out. Then you've got the generator sine wave that's putting out. And so it may be it may be coming in like this, right? And so it's not exactly the same wave as the one from the utility. And so if you measure your, your points, they're gonna be pretty similar, um, but it's not the exact same wave. And so what happens whenever we have a transfer switch or, or, or during a normal transfer of a, or, or operation of a generator is you've got utility power present, like we have right now, and then all of a sudden there's a power outage, it goes away. So now we're sitting in the dark. The generator's gonna crank, 
That transfer switch is gonna transfer and start sending generator power into the home, right? So, so everything in the house, including the air conditioners, are getting started with a fresh sine wave coming from the generator. It doesn't know anything about another sine wave. It's just getting the sine wave from the generator. So what happens whenever um, the, the utility power comes back on? Let's say it's an hour later, utility comes back on. Mm. What, what happens uh, to, the, to that whole setup, the transfer switch? Anybody? You fry everything in the house, probably. Well, just so what I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, what does the transfer switch do when the utility power comes back? Right, right. right? And so and so you go from having utility power to no power to generator power, and then it goes from generator power back to utility power, just like that. It slams it in. That transfer switch pops up really really fast, right? And so when it pops up, you're basically going from one sine wave to another sine wave. For some reason, I don't know the exact reason, but for some reason, the only thing that responds negatively to that transfer is scroll compressors. And the scroll compressors are found in your air conditioner units. And so, and it's not 100% of the time, it's, you know, the, the more we do, it seems like I see it more and more. I, I would probably think it's somewhere around the 30, 40% chance that it's gonna happen. It's kind of like Russian roulette, right? So if your sine waves are lined up, it's gonna happen. But if they're not, then it's gonna, it's gonna mess up. What it tends to do is it makes that scroll compressor try to run backwards. You can audibly hear it. And so a lot of times you'll run into this where if, if the AC does not stop, and come on with a fresh sine wave, then and it tries to run backwards, you can hear it kind of make a, a rough noise like but, but what you'll notice is normally when a compressor is running, it's pulling the heat off of the, off of the house from the outside. You can feel hot air uh, when you put your hand over that fan outside. If you put your hand over that fan and it's just like regular cool air, that compressor is not running. And so what'll happen is it'll sit there and it'll heat up. It'll try to run backwards and it'll heat up. There's a thermal overload in it and it'll, it'll shut down. Usually customers will call saying, hey, my AC is not cooling, you know, and then we gotta go try to figure out what's going on. In the worst case scenario, it actually burns up the capacitors in the AC unit. And lots of generator installers, we've gone behind them, will come in and they'll tell their customers that hey, you, you had a surge, and that's what, that's what tore your air conditioner up. But that's not true. What tore the air conditioner up is the air conditioner didn't have a chance to stop during the transfer and come on fresh with a new sine wave. And so our goal, the two main reasons we load manage and optimize is number one, to make sure that it can handle, the generator can handle the load that, that everything's connected to. And number two, to make sure we don't tear up air conditioner units. And so um, now we get into how do we accomplish that goal, right? And so it used to be last year even, even in the end of the beginning of this year, we used the, the SAC, SAC module, the AC module, that's, that's found in the transfer switch. Everybody familiar with what this is? Um, we use this. To, man, to, to, you, to manage the low voltage circuit. So all this is, is there's four different sets of contacts in here. And so a contact is simply just a switch, right? And so they, they're open and then they close. And so what happens when anytime through the control circuit that, the, that transfer switch moves from utility to generator or from generator to utility, this little box will make these switches open. And then they start a five minute time, a five minute countdown. The first one will close after five minutes. The second one will close five minutes, 30 seconds, and so on and so forth until they're all closed. Now, all of these devices that we're talking about today will also trip. So to go back to the overload protection, they will open, uh, you know, when I say trip, that's what I mean. They're gonna open the circuit if the frequency of this sine wave that they're sensing drops below uh, the, a tolerable range. So let's say normal frequency for, for um, 
voltage in the United States is 60 Hertz. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one complete loop down back up, it does that 60 times a second. That's what, that's what the frequency is. And so as you take a generator and it's sitting there spinning and they're not as efficient as the grid, they're probably around 59, you know, 59 point something. Um, but as you start loading it up, you put heavy loads on it, you can hear that generator change tones because it starts bogging it down. Well, if it slows it down too much, this, this frequency is going to slow. It'll be 57 and 56 and it gets to an unsafe range. These, all of these devices that we're talking about are designed to where if that frequency drops below a tolerable range, I can't remember exactly which one it is off the top of my head. Um, let's say it's 58.2. If it drops below that, then they open, right? And so if you've got a motor that's trying to start and that generator's bogging down, it's gonna open and then it'll drop that load off if it's wired correctly and then that generator will revive and, and then keep on going. So that's, that prevents it from overloading. And so um, we, we, we use this device, the, but we had, um, Generac makes these, they're called SMMs, and they were pretty simple. It's just like the PSPs. It's a set of contactor, it's a contactor in there, but they're allowed to pass heavier voltages um, and heavier current through it. And so the, the little SACA module, those little bitty things, you can't, I, I think you can only pull three amps through the whole circuit and it's not made for high voltage. So you can't put 120 volts through it or, or 240 volts through it or anything like that. And so um, you, you, you use that strictly for controlling control circuits. And so, um, but the SMMs and the PSP SAC-60s and SAC-60Ys are designed to actually break the electrical circuit. So, so those you would take like a, like the power circuit for a condensing unit. You can you can put it in line with the power. Or we use them often on the heat strips uh, that are found in the air conditioning units because those are those are typically 60 amp heat strips for one or or a 30. You'll either have 60 and 60 or a 60 and a 30. Um, and so. We use those uh, for, for that application, but you could also use them. They're not necessarily made specifically for air conditioners. They're made for any heavy load that you're trying to drop. So, I mean, I was at a house one time and the guy had a, 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 a car rack that would you know, lift your car so that you could work on it. So, you know, it's a big heavy motor. And so we, we put a, um, at that time we didn't have the SAC 60s, but we put an SMM on it and we set it to shed. And so um, that brings me to the next question. Do you know the difference between, and this is a lot of this is optimized terminology. Do you know the difference between managing a load and shedding a load? Shedding is cutting it out. Or it won't keep going. Correct. Correct, lead. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Hey, look, I like them. Um, but you're not wrong, so that's good. And so, right, so so a lot of times we'll use the terminology in the paperwork that says, hey, we want you to shed this load. So like, for instance, that guy with the car lift, he didn't need to use his car lift when he's on generator power. And so when I designed and sold that one, I said, hey, I want you to shed that load. And so we could have managed it, which would have meant that we allow power to go to it when you're on generator, but if you go to cut that sucker on and it overloads, it's going to then trip power, right? And so, but, but if you shed it, that means that look, even if you wanted to use it while you're on generator power, we, we program the device to where it's not gonna allow power to come on. So um, when is a more common reason that we use the shed function in, in our um, installations? Non-essential loads? Non-essential loads? Like what? Like, I mean, that, that's not, I mean, that is a true statement, but... The what, things what, that you need to run on generator power are likely to be managed, but if you don't need it to run on generator power, you want to shed it. So, so I guess what I'm trying to get is, in our day-to-day, -day, uh, we go to a normal house, what is something that we want them to not use when they're running on generator? Yeah. The, the heat strips. The heat strips. Very, very good. 
And so more specifically, and so you get into, it's the secondary heat strips that we want because heat strips are the heaviest loads that you're going to find in a house. Motors and heat strips are your biggest thing, right? Lights, they don't really pull that much. Receptacles, things that you're plugging in, unless it's, a, unless it's electric heaters, those get you sometimes. Those things don't, don't typically pull as much. But anytime you've got an electric coil or you've got an electric motor, that's going to draw a lot of power. And so we run into this situation. What are the two ways that heat is created in a home? Electric or gas. Electric or gas, right? And so if it's gas, then it's simple. You know, you plug it into the, the whole air conditioner system is plugged into a receptacle and there's like a little igniter and it ignites the flame and then the flame creates the heat. So that doesn't pull anything on, on the generator. That's really no load at all. But if you've got electric heat strips, however, uh, that sucker, you, you, most heat strips come in five kW increments, and and typically in a in a, a house, let's say you got a a 1500 square foot house or a thousand square foot house, like a, a little small home, you're gonna have at least 10 kW worth of heat in that thing. You get into a 2000 square foot home, now you might have 20 kW worth of heat in that, and so then you get into multiple, you, you know, you get into homes that are, that have two air conditioning systems, well, you may have 15 kW worth of heat on one side and 15 kW worth of heat on the other side. Well, that's 30 kW right there, and you're sitting there installing a 22 kW air-cooled unit that's only going to be producing about 19, a little over 19 kW on natural gas. When wintertime comes, that generator is going to shut off. It's going to overload, right? And so typically those air conditioner units are partitioned, and so they've, they've got two breakers in them. They've got, it, it's normally, and, and our salespeople will normally take pictures of it, and they'll say, look, it's a 60 and a 30, right? And so it's not 100%. You have to test it to truly, truly know. But what happens is an air conditioning system is comprised of two components. You've got your, let's say, your blower fan and your control circuit that sits up in the attic. And then outside, you've got a condensing unit, right? And so if this is electric, then there'll be two breakers in here normally. Sometimes it's just one, but there'll normally be two breakers. And so you'll have your main power source. Let's say this is your electrical panel. And so they'll have a breaker that comes over and feeds this breaker. They'll have another breaker that comes over and feeds this breaker. There'll be a third breaker in here that comes outside and feeds a disconnect, which feeds the air conditioning unit. From here, one of these breakers typically controls the blower and there's a low voltage circuit board in here, right? And so there's like a little 24 volt transformer and that, that feeds this circuit board. And then from the circuit board, it comes down and there's a thermostat. And so, what we, what we do in these types of situations where we're trying to, where we're going to say, hey, you need to manage your primary and shed your secondary. So let's say that this was, um, the first one was a 10 kW heat strip and the second one was a 5. What we would do is we would come in here and we would say, okay, we're going to break this circuit right here and we're going to put in a, 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 a one of these PSPs and then we're going to come on the second one and put in a second PSP and so we now we've got two boxes and so our first box is actually coming over here and feeding this circuit that we know believe that we know makes the blower and the um, low voltage circuit come on so we have to keep this one on so we're going to manage that one right that one has got to be managed because if it was shed, what would happen? Thermostat wouldn't come on. The thermostat wouldn't come on. That's right. So, so if you shed it and you don't allow power to go to it, then their AC is not going to work. And we want their AC to work. And so you manage that one. The second one you shed. And so when you shed the second one, that just means those, does everybody know what a secondary heat strip is? 
So, so what happens is, like, let's say we're trying to heat this room, and it, we come in, and it's 32 degrees in here. And nobody's been here all week, and it's just like, my gosh, it's freezing. Cut the heater on. Well, what happens is that first heat strip's going to come on, and it's going to be passing air over those hot coils, but the temperature's not going to be coming up fast enough. So that second heat strip's going to come on, and then it's going to help. Like, okay, now you've got double the, the heat, and so it gives you basically a little bit more oomph. But when you get into a situation where it's wintertime and you've been here and, and now you're just you're just keeping the temperature at let's say 74 and you know it kind of drops down and then comes back up that really operates all you need is one heat strip for that you don't have to get that like oh god i'm taking it from really really cold to really really hot and so that's really when that secondary heat strip comes in so in our situations where we're we're saying, hey, look, if we have another winter storm and your generator comes on, we're going to shed half. We're going to shed that that secondary heat strip, and so you your system will only work off of 10 kW instead of the full five. And so it doesn't really hurt the customer, but it does save the generator from from using that extra power, right? So um, that's the reason that we manage and shed. And that's the most common reason that you're gonna find us shedding things. Every once in a while, there's a hot tub that we're saying you need to shed it or something like that. Um, what's, what's important about that though, is these new SAC 60s and the, SAC, the, the C's and the Y's, when you take them fresh out of the box um, and open them, just like this one is, if you just take this thing and, and wire in your line and your load it's going to shed it's, it's it comes from the factory in the shed position and so if you just you get in these situations where it's, you didn't have power or you, and you couldn't get there and program it well you've you've made it by default where when that generator comes on their AC is not going to work so it's very important that we get in there and manage those things um, and, and so you get the generator cranked, get it, get it powered up so you can go in there and program it. Um, so that is the main reason, that's the difference between managing and shedding. And so when we use the, uh, well, let me ask you this question. In this scenario that I just drew, that, that handles the first reason that we load manage. But what about the second problem? What about protecting the condensing unit? Does this protect the condensing unit? It does not, right? And so that's why you often, um, well, I'm saying it does not, but tell me why it doesn't. It's not fused? Is that the other way? Mm -mm. Who said that? That's exactly right. So, the main difference between this device and the, the old SMMs, right, and the SAC 60s, the difference between those is that when you have a transfer from utility to generator, when you go to, when it slams back, right, or from generator to utility, um, these open. The, SAC, the SMMs and the SAC 60s, the SAC 60C, let me say it that way. The SMM and the SAC 60C do not open. They stay closed. And so whenever that transition happens, we need it to open. We need to power a kill. It doesn't matter really for how long. We just need it to kill and then come back on. And those devices don't allow that to happen. And so that's the problem. Anytime you see another company that has gone out there and taken an SMM and put it, let's say, at the condensing unit, so you got, this is your disconnect, and they come over here and they put an SMM right here, or a SAC 60, C, they don't know what you're doing. They don't understand the fact that the sine wave is going to mess an AC up. Because this device will prevent it from overloading, but it doesn't protect the air conditioner. And that's the case whenever I go back, we, we've gone behind other people and seen them with air conditioners that have been messed up and, and they've got SMMs sitting there on the condensers and it's like, well, that's, that's the problem. You didn't have a power surge. You're not managed properly. And so how do we accomplish that break? How do, how do we um, 
how do we make sure that when the transition happens, the um, condenser shuts down? Put on a SAC 60C wire? That's one way. Run an AC wire. Run an AC wire, right? And so what we're doing is we're running from this from this little module that, that I just explained opens. We're running that to where? Okay, and why are we doing that? What does a float switch do? Anybody? So whenever you've got a, a, a unit in the attics, right? They, they have these drain pans. So when an air conditioner is running its air conditioning cycle, it naturally produces condensation and it creates water. And so there's normally a PVC conduit that comes out of there and sometimes you'll step on it and it leaks down the wall and I gotta pay for a new wall. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, that drain line gets all that water out of there, right? But, but over time, it builds up sludge, it clogs up, and it starts dripping. And so it drips into this drain pan. Well, if it overflows, then the people are gonna have a problem. So what the air conditioner contractor does is he takes a float switch that's, and he mounts it right there on the side of this little uh, pan. And that float switch has two wires. And so basically, like Christian said, they take this control circuit, this low voltage control circuit that goes to the thermostat. And it also has wires that come out here to the condensing unit and tell it to open and close. And so you've got your main power coming from the electrical panel to this disconnect that's sitting there, but but that thing's not sitting there running all, all, all day long, right? It's just, even though it's got 240 there, what makes it cut on and cut off? Well, it's the control circuit, the 24 volts that's coming from the unit in the attic. And so when you set that thermostat to say, hey, I want you to, I want you to come on at 72, to, or I want you to be set at 72 degrees, if the temperature gets above that, it's gonna tell this control circuit to send 24 volts to a little contactor in here. It pulls it in and then the unit goes, oh, now I'm gonna work. And then whenever it hits temperature, it says, okay, stop sending 24 volts. And so it pulls out and then the unit shuts off. That's, that's a real oversimplification of, of how that works. Well, what, what the uh, AC contractor does is he takes this, his little float switch and he wires it into that circuit and says, look, if you're gonna send that 24 volts down here, you gotta go through my float switch first. And so that float switch is a closed circuit. And then whenever it floats up, it opens. And so it's like, hey, if, if, I, if every time I'm sitting there running, I'm creating water, if, if I float up, I'm gonna open, so you can tell me to run, but I can't complete my circuit. And it'll stop the AC from running and prevent the water from leaking. Now there's two ways that they could do it. They could literally break the circuit that goes out to the condenser, or they could break the circuit that sends 24 volts over here to the thermostat. And so it really depends on the AC guy as to which one he chose to break. And so the reason that we as a company say, hey, just go to the float switch, is because he's already done it. There's no sense in us going into the electrical control system of the air conditioner and, and trying to figure out which one do I break? How do I make this thing shut off? He already did it. Just go and wire it into the float switch. And so it, that means that when his float switch is closed, the circuit will work, but then ours has to be closed also for the circuit to work. So if his opens, it goes off. If ours opens, it goes off. So they're two, they're, they're, they're wired right in, in series to each other. And so, um, but that's the easiest, most common method that we use is to run that, that control circuit up there. And so um, sometimes we say, hey, look, man, I got my, my ATS is sitting right here. Why can't I just run my wire right to the condenser? And, and usually I say, yes, you can. All we're doing is the same thing that he did up here. We're just doing it down here. We're catching the wire here at the unit rather than catching the wire in the attic. Um, and so once you really understand what you're doing, you can find unique places to catch the wire. We had this discussion when we were talking with the leads about sometimes you've got an attic, you've got a, a unit that is 
upstairs on a second story, you just can't get your wire to it, but that wire actually travels down already through the bottom story and then goes out, and so just catch it in the story you can get to. And so, but like I said, once you really understand what you're doing, you can get a little creative with it. Um, but that is the reason that we use the, uh, the, the SACA module. Now, we, we run into situations when you install generators to where sometimes, go ahead, Christian. Uh, Ryan mentioned the other day something about um, tying into a resistor instead of a float switch. Okay, that's a good point, that's a good point. So every once in a while, some of the newer technology, the float switch that I just described is, it's literally a box and it's got a little float that hangs down. And so as it floats up, it then opens the circuit. Yeah. And so that's just your standard. It's just a, it's a set of contacts just like this thing is. Well, some of the newer ones that we ran into are, they're resistive. I don't, I don't know exactly how they work, but they don't have a maneuver, they don't have a mechanical switch in there. It basically, when it senses water, it changes the resistance that's in an electrical circuit. So there's like a resistor in there and it changes it somehow and prevents the current from flowing through and that shuts it down. And so what I've found is when we take and we go to a float switch that's one of those resistors, and so it doesn't have a mechanical arm, it's literally, it looks kind of like a, a, a photo cell or, or it's just like a little block with a, um, with, with a little piece that hangs down and it's just slightly solid. There's nothing that moves on it. Those, it, it does, whenever we break that, it doesn't, it doesn't cause that AC to uh, shut off. And so in those situations, you actually have to go in and find the wire that's going to the condenser and break it. And so it is few and far between. I'm trying to, I've shown pictures of these to the leads, but if you are in an attic and you see one that's not mechanical, it's not physically moving, ask. Take a picture, say, hey, is this one of those resistive or whatever? You know, you'll know. Worst case scenario is you tie it in and when you go to test your system, it's not gonna shut the unit down. That's usually how I find them is because I'll go to the do a final and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and for the generator to uh, come on, it does, all that goes fine. When I transfer back to utility, that AC still keeps running. That's when I know I have a problem because when it switches back to utility, that AC should shut down. And so, um, so let me ask you, uh, because I was just going to get into it, but when... What's the difference between a SAC 60 and a SAC 60Y? Sound wave? Hmm. Nope. It's not the sound wave. They both, they both react off of a sound wave. And so a SAC 60 and a SAC 60Y. They look exactly the same. They get wired exactly the same. The difference is the Y feature. And so the Y feature is that it's what PSP has deemed um, their, their terminology or, or their, their ability for that device to actually open when it transfers back. So when you go from generator to utility, you do that transfer. The problem with a normal SAC 60 and a SMM is that it doesn't open. If it has a Y feature, a SAC 60Y, or a, or a SAC 24 has a Y feature, then when it transfers back, it will open. And so we run into situations all the time where, hey, I can't get, I just spit everywhere, I can't get my wire from my ATS to a condenser. It's on the other side of the house. This is a remodeled house. I done built this. I just can't get to it. Or maybe it's a second story. There's no way I can get my wire up there. And the, the condensing wire coming down goes to the other side of the house. And so how do I manage that condenser? How do I make that condenser shut off? And so before they came out with the, the SAC 60Y or the SAC 24 that has the Y feature, there wasn't any way. We had to gamble with those. And we just were in a situation where there's no way to manage it, which made us very, very uncomfortable. And so they finally came out with these products that give us that ability for that, for that delay. And so um, 
that puts you in the, in the situation now of when, you know, so when do you use a SAC 24 versus a SAC 60Y? Yeah, so let me ask you then let me ask you like this. What is the difference between a SAC 24, this device? It has 24 volts and the other one has 120. Well it doesn't none of them have voltage. But but yes, you can take a SAC 24 is very similar to this AC module in the sense of it's designed to allow up to 24 volts to pass through it. And so it actually does get powered by 24 volts. You have to, you have to pick up a 24 volt circuit to power, to energize it. And then, and then it's just got, it's actually got two sets of contacts. Whereas this has four, it, it has two. And so what you'll normally, the way we use these is we'll go into a, a system like this that is not electric, it's gas and we will jump off of the 24 volt circuit, add in a SAC 24, and then break the float switch, just like we were running a wire to the AC module. Does that make sense? And then, and then you have to program it. The biggest, the biggest hang up with these new PSP products, they seem to be pretty robust, but you have to program them. And the programming gets a little bit confusing. So you've got the wiring of the unit, which is one thing you gotta know how to do, but then you gotta know how to program it. And so when you program a SAC 24 properly, then you can basically, it prevents you from having to run a wire from point A to point B. Now realize that's a $160 device. And so, and the, the AC module is, comes free in the transfer switch. So don't get lazy and go, I'm just gonna go up there and put in a SAC 24 because I don't wanna pull a wire. A wire costs 25 bucks. You're not, so, so pull the wire, don't just um, throw in a SAC 24. But there are situations where you can't, you have no other option but to put the SAC 24. And so, um, so when would you use a SAC 60Y? So when you have higher voltage, load management. So the, the truth is, in the same situation, <laughs> Instead of, about Instead of shedding, right? Oh. Managing and shedding, they're different. Well, okay. so, so the same, in the same situation that you use a SAC 24, you could opt to use a SAC 60Y. You just put it outside. You just put it outside at the condenser. And so you put it at the condenser, and now you're not messing with the control circuit at all. Right. You're, at, you're at the condenser, you program it to where, hey, when this thing transfers back to, to utility power, it's gonna open, it's gonna accomplish the same goal. So you have an option there. Anytime you have one, like, you know, I can't get to it. Sometimes these salespeople know this and they put it in your notes, like, hey, you've got a remote air conditioner, you can't get to it. And so you have an option, you know, do I wanna climb in the attic and do I wanna, wire in the SAC 24 or do I just want to walk outside to the condensing unit and pop the box right next to the disconnect and wire it in there and program it. They cost the same. I don't care. It's your choice. Dealer's choice. Do whatever, whatever you want. And so, but I have had guys not quite understand the concept and have gone in where we've got, so we've got an electric system like this and we can't get to the unit uh, with, with a control wire. So what will we use, what would that setup be like? Put the uh, SAC 60Y outside. So, you could, so, so you're saying right here on the disconnect to put a SAC 60CY here, mm -hmm. but you've got electric heat strips here, which means you gotta do something to manage those heat strips. So what would you do for that? Well, you have to put a SAC 60. You got to put something on the on the the power for the heat strip, right? And so, in this scenario, does everybody understand what I'm asking? So, if you've got a air conditioner unit, this AC right here. Let me go ahead and erase what what I've got drawn in here. Just follow the wire where you're going to. <laughs> 
So, so you you've got a heat unit. It's got two heat strips, and so this is the scenario. You're up on the second story. You cannot get a wire from the AC module to the condenser. You can't get it up in the attic. You've got two electric heat strips in this unit. What are you going to use to manage this system to accomplish both goals? What you got, Don? So you're gonna put a SAG 60 C Y on the control uh, on the control um, breaker. Oh, okay, so and what are you uh, calling the control breaker? Is we're, we're gonna say it's it's heat strip one that's also controlling the the low voltage circuit, right? So what what Don is saying to do is we're gonna come in here on this one, the one that we're managing, and we're gonna make that a SAC 60 C Y. Then what? Uh, and then you would just shed your second, um, your second stage heat. But with the SAC 60 CY mm -hmm. on top, you would program it to manage and you would just program the Y function so you can cut out the um, condensing unit outside when power transfers. Exactly. So what he's saying is, you're gonna come in here and you're just gonna throw a standard old SAC 60 C on that second heat strip that you're shedding. Because when you put it in there, with no programming, it's going to open up. It's going to shed that second part. You're going to go in there on the first one that you're managing, and you're going to use a CY because that Y feature does what? It opens whenever it transfers back to utility. And so if this thing, if this thing is managed, and when it switches back to utility, it kills the main power that kills the whole control board and everything, that's going to tell this condenser to shut off. And so, and so this condenser is not going to cut on until this thing restores power, and which is going to allow that condenser to come on on fresh power. And so that accomplishes your goal. And so, you know, I've seen people try to go, let me use a SAC 60C here, let me use a SAC 60C here, let me put a SAC 24 here, or a SAC CY here. You're using an extra device you don't need. You can kill two birds with one stone by using the CY in the in the beginning. So technically, when you use the CY and the C when you're shedding it, you don't need to even run the low voltage wire from the uh, AC module. That's correct. Okay. So, but so so then the question then is like, well, why don't we just do that every time, right? Like, and and it, it it comes down to cost. It's like hundred and ninety dollars for a CY versus free. For, for for this versus it's just it's just a numbers thing. But if you, you are putting a CY in the C, if you are putting a CY up there. If you've got a CY there, you don't, need a don't waste your time on wire. Don't. You know, you just yeah. Why you're doing a CY there? Yeah. Yeah. There's no other option to to get a wire there. Correct. Yeah. There's there's a reason for it, and so I mean, but but if you've used the CY in the because that was the whole thing in the beginning was like, and a lot of people, they still don't understand this. They're thinking, well, heck, I got me a, uh, I put an S, a standard SMM up there on the heat strip. Why am I wasting my time running the wire also to a condenser? Well, it's because the, sex, the SMM doesn't open. And when it doesn't open, you have to have another control source. But the SAC 60Y accomplishes both goals. And so that's, that's the main reason. And so... Um, does that clarify for for everybody? Does it make a little bit more sense about what y'all are doing out there? Um, Chris, so the day I came up to you, uh, what about the actual programming? The day you pushed me? <laughs> or the day you hit me over the head with me? No. 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 Okay. But the actual programming of it, like what we need to set it sure. to what, you know? Yeah, so that, that part gets a little confusing. And so we they all come with these little cheat sheets. It's like, this is the programming guide. It's like, yeah, like who's going to sit there in the attic and read that, right? Hmm. And so um, we normally text Zach and say, hey, Zach, send me that picture you got. And so I encourage everybody to text Zach. That's, that's actually company policy. Text Zach. So text Zach. It's written in the handbook. That's commandment number two. That's right. That's right. Um, so you, you, you're not going to be able to see. Um, I thought, you know, I had this great idea. I'm going to plug it in and program the thing in front of you. But 
you're not going to really be able to see what I'm doing. But essentially, there's a mode button. So when you get this thing fresh, it's like this. And, and so you're going to hit the mode, and it's going to toggle through options. Like this one says A, right? And so, make sure I'm looking at the right um, manual. And so, you're going to hit A, and it's going to go B. Then you're going to get into C. C, we want program to, it, right now it's, it's got four zeros. You want to change C to where it says zero, 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 one. Okay? And so, mode C is to enable preset under frequency cutoff points. Set to zero to enable the user to adjust the frequency cutoff setting. Um, and if you change it, if you leave it at zero means it sheds, basically. One means you can actually now use it to manage. That's really all that basically comes down to. So you've got to go in here and you got to go to C and you got to change it to one to allow you to change the other features to make it manage. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go down to the feature D. And so D is the, the minimum, hold on, D is the delay after power up to allow the power to stabilize. So in the traditional AC module, what's the time delay? Five, five minutes, right? That's aggravating, it's a very long time. We don't really need it to sit five minutes. Well, the, we have the ability with both of these devices, all the PSP stuff, to where we can change that. And so what I suggest to do is change that from, from the five minutes to three minutes. Just give it a three minute time delay. That gives the, the house time to reboot, let things come on, then you can set. It. So if you've got multiple air conditioners, you don't want to set them all for three minutes. You want your first one at three minutes, you want your next one at four minutes. So you got to use a little bit of, of, um, of, of your knowledge. Huh? Common sense, that's the word. You gotta use common sense um, whenever you're uh, programming these things. And so, um, the next feature that you wanna go to is the D. Oh, we just did the D. Um, you wanna go to the Y. And so the Y is after, you wanna take the Y and you wanna set it to two minutes. And so that's basically whenever the generator um, transfers back, you want it to shut off for two minutes and then come back on to, to a regular. And so um, that's how you do the, the SAC 60s. And so if you want it to shed, what do you? How do you program it? SAC 60 or SAC 60 C1? Zero. Actually, you never use never use a SAC 60 CY to shed. Oh yeah. So, um, you leave it how it is. That's it. How do you know? What's, how do you know if you've got a sec sixty or a sec sixty cy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> to us right now, the, the outside brown box is the no, only it's, way. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's, that, that's that's that's, that's, that's the truth. It's terrible. Box. I don't know why PSP hadn't changed this yet. But it doesn't say it anywhere. It's in the programming or in the box. And if the box gets wet or gets somebody opens one and sticks it in the wrong box, you're kind of screwed. Yep. So you've got to wire the thing up, check it, and then go, oops, I got the wrong one. Unwire it and put another one in. It's it's aggravating. So, um, and I trust all of y'all are going to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the SAC 24 is a little bit... A little, a little different on the programming. Um, you got to go to the mode. You got to hold down mode, <clears throat> and then it, and then it gives you three options. And so you've got UA, FA, LD, UP. You want to go to the UA function. Wait, yeah. this, what, what, what was this function for? It's, it's the program, the SAC twenty four. Yeah, so when you program a SAC 24, you gotta hold the mode button down and then it'll pop into a menu. And then you've got four options in that menu. You wanna go to the UA. I don't expect you guys to remember this, but I do expect you to get you a, a, a cheat sheet. Take a picture of it and that's what you're gonna go off of. Because once you're in it, once you got it, you're like, oh, it's pretty simple. Or just take SAC. Take SAC, that's right. Or area. And so you'll go to your <laughs> UA function and then once you're on the set, the one that you want, you hold down mode again 
and then that will bring you into the the settings like we had on the SAC 60. So you're going to change the G, the zero, the D, and the Y. And the Y looks like a four. The Y does look like a four. Not really a Y. Yeah. And so all SAC 24s have the Y feature, but you're just going to scroll down, and it's the same kind. Of, it's the same programming variable. The numbers are going to be the same, but you're just going to. You know, it says it says mode up and down. So once you find it, you're going to hit up until you get to the desired um, setting that, that you want. And so we want the Y to be zero zero two point zero to give it that two minutes. But um, programming is key, and understanding when you're going to use um, each device is kind of really the tricky part. But once you, once you really do it, once you, once you get it, it's kind of, it, it just, it becomes second nature. But I have to admit it is kind of complicated. But super duper important, guys. I can't tell you how many companies out there don't really understand the goal. It's very easy for all of us to get in this zone where it's like, hey, I hear I work here and I know that I need to take this wire and bring it up there and hook it up like this, but I have no idea why. And I have no idea what it's really doing. And, and so I just know from my career um, that when you understand why you're doing things, when you, when you really understand that, then, then you can kind of get creative and maybe you can figure out a better way to do it. But um, when you understand the, the real mission, it makes it makes your job easier. And so, um, does anybody have any questions? There's a lot of information, I know. All right, well, I expect to never have a problem with the load management ever again. Now. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. Gotcha. <laughs>